Greetings owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles and welcome to my product analysis for From the Vault Transform. Now, for those of you who do not know what From the Vault is, it is a box series that they have done once a year for a number of years now. Each time you get 15 foil double-faced cards. So these are all double-sided cards. Now they are done with the From the Vault foiling process which is essentially almost like a double foiling. It creates a very nice effect to look at. It does cause the cards to curl even more than normal foils though. So don't be surprised if you pick one up if the cards are already curling in the package. That is a common issue with these. So you get 15 foil cards in the package, you get one spin down die, and they call it a collector's guide, but what it's been in the past, and what I expect again this time, is really just a fold out sheet of paper that's like a glorified poster essentially, that will have a picture of all the cards along with a little blurb about each card. Now, this, this isn't that historic obviously, they're not reaching that far back because they can't go that far back in, into the vault when Transform hasn't been around in the game for that long. But that aside, this product comes out November 24th of 2017. And let's take a look at the 15 different cards that you would get when you purchase it. First off is Nissa Vastwood Seer. Now they have included all five of the cycle of legendary creatures that turn into planeswalkers. And you have to meet different conditions to flip them. In Nissa's case, she cares about how many lands you have when you have enough lands then she switches into a planeswalker the concept of legendary creatures flipping into planeswalkers was a novel one and is very cool so these are an excellent include as, as far as i'm concerned when it comes to transform cards now nissa is a nine dollar card currently and we're using canadian values here for non-foil versions i'm not comparing these foil from the vault versions to foil prices I'm using regular prices because the from the vault prices are almost always going to be lower than regular foil printings of a card so to give a fair valuation in terms of money I do like to use regular prices I like to use conservative estimates here so nine dollars on Nissa Vastwood Seer after that we have another one of the legendary flip planeswalker creatures and that's Kytheon Hero of Akros. Now he is $6 and he flips into the Gideon Battleforged version Planeswalker there. These are, the Planeswalkers are pretty cool. I mean, none of them are too, too powerful. Like with the, well, I mean, that's not true. Some of them are fairly powerful. The strongest one is Jace's Vryn's Prodigy, or sorry, Jace Vryn's Prodigy. And it's interesting how everybody except Gideon has their, like it's Nissa, Jace, Liliana, Gideon for some reason was called Kytheon before. So you've got Jace here and he flips into the most valuable planeswalker in this box set, Jace Telepath Unbound, because he is actually playable in tournament formats and not just in commander and things of that nature he has a higher price tag just a regular non-foil version of him commands a 33 dollar price and the fact that this is double foiled may give it a premium for some people but more than likely it's not going to be near the price of a regular foiled jace but either way this is the most valuable card included in the entire box set and after that we have Elbrus, the Binding Blade, and when I see cards like this, I just feel, I don't know, they just feel too new to me, the from the vault, but that's just a personal issue, I mean, obviously, you can let that weigh in however much, or as little as you want to, Elbrus, the Blinding, Binding Blade, I should say, is a really cool card, because it's an artifact equipment that turns into a demon, and the concept is, is you basically the demons trapped inside that blade and he needs blood to be freed and anyone who holds it will hear the demons voice until they basically unleash withingar unbound that's pretty cool i mean it's only a five dollar card but overall conceptually i very much like that then we have chandra fire of kaladesh which is a five dollar legendary creature planeswalker that flips into chandra roaring flame she looks pretty intense honestly this i think is one of the sexiest chandra artworks of all of them i mean obviously i don't want a hug from this lady but pretty good artwork i do have to say then we've got gisella the broken blade now this is the this is a crazy inclusion i don't like the fact that they're including cards 
that have literally just rotated out of standard. This does not feel like they're reaching into the vault. They literally just said, like, into the vault with it. They just rotated it out of standard. So, I mean, I will give them that it is very, very cool. I mean, Gisela, the Broken Blade, combines with the next card, Bruna, that we'll talk about in a moment. But together, they meld into this gigantic monstrosity. And I do enjoy the concept of meld. They executed it sloppily when they brought it out because they didn't put it on enough creatures and it wasn't spread out across the block, so you couldn't really appreciate it enough. But I remember enjoying the novelty of it at first. And Gisela is the only really strong meld thing that exists. And on top of that, just... Four mana for a fourth reflying first strike lifelink angel is pretty dope. And the angel horror concept where you can see like Emrakul's tentacles striking down into the sky along with kind of twined into her wings is just a win for me. I like that. And so then on the back you have the different halves. It's pretty crazy. I mean, you've got her and Bruna the Fading Light, which is awesome because she will... Bruna, when you put Bruna out, if you don't have out the other half, if you happen to not have Gisela then you can, or I mean Gisela's dead, then you can get Gisela back out of your graveyard and put that uh, put that into play. So that's pretty dope, and then you can get ready to meld them up. So I definitely enjoy the flavor behind that. The gigantic Brisella voice of nightmares that's created as a result is intense, both on power and flavor levels. It is horrific. The concept of these two angels being warped and perverted so much and being combined into this thing, so amazing. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't forgive the fact that Bruna is a one dollar card, but still, I mean, you, you can't you, if you're putting Giselle in. I do feel like you have to put Bruna in, so it does get a pass from me there. Then you've got the next card in here that really is the other meat in terms of the value that you're getting, and that's Bloodline Keeper. Bloodline Keeper is twenty dollars. It's an amazing flip vampire. It's definitely going to be part of what pushes demand for this because it's a gigantic vampire lord that when it flips into the Lord of Lineage gets out of control and is already crazy before that point. Like it's already a really strong card just without flipping. And then the fact that it flips into something beefier that boosts the tokens is just buck nutty. So 20 bones on that bad boy. He's the other big meat. There's some other decent cards. I mean obviously Gisela being $10 and there's a couple other cards that are over 10 We've got, after that, Arlen Cord, which, I mean, this is Shadows of Innistrad, so again, I feel that this thing just rotated. I don't enjoy the fact that they did that. They did give it, um, I don't know, I, I, do like, I do like the whole concept behind the card. I mean, like, I like the legendary Planeswalker Human Werewolf concept. I just, I have a hard time with the cards that are just, uh, like, so new to me in terms of being considered from the vault. But uh, that's just a conceptual thing. So if you're here determining just whether you want what's inside of it, ignore the fact that I will continue to bring that up with every card that bothers me on this level. So, $5 on that. Now this next card here drives me nuts, the fact that they included this. And that's Arguel's Bloodfast. I mean, come on, from the vault? Guys, this card, I'm not even joking. When I made this video right now, today, this card was, was released into Standard Ixalan came out 38 days ago, and this is from Ixalan. I mean, give me a break. It's a cool card conceptually, sure. That guy wandering on this crazy blood pilgrimage and the crazy blood trail that goes up the temple of Alcataz on the other side. Oh, that's funky. Did they, did they decide to put the expansion symbol right up there under the name? That's cool. I didn't notice that before. Well, that's a funky little tweak. I do like that. But, uh, I mean, the fact that they included this card is pretty insulting. It shows how far they were reaching to make a From the Vault. The From the Vaults have gotten progressively more of a joke. So, I'm, I'm kind of not surprised by this, but this is not a From the Vault card. It's only $1.50. I don't know if this is Wizards trying to hint that this is supposed to be a big card coming up later on with other cards that come out. Or if they just literally are insulting their customers by shoving this in there. Uh, then after that, we've got something that is far less insulting, and that is Archangel Avacyn. This card is really, really solid. And I enjoy the concept behind it that when it dies, not when it dies, sorry, but when a non-angel you control dies, it turns into Avacyn the Purifier. Avacyn the Purifier's artwork is intense with that crazy, like, fr red fringe along the angel wings and the fire coming up beneath her. It's really enjoyable, and it's a really solid card. So that's nice, and that's a $6 value right there. Then we've got Garuk Relentless, and he has delicious new artwork on him. I do enjoy that. He looks really cool, and uh, he the whole the whole concept behind him the the 
the curse that he got from Liliana that turns him into Garuk the Veil Cursed, that's a win for me. I definitely enjoy that. The fact that he's only a $5 card, no problem there. The artwork is fantastic. I really enjoy the fact that they put that in there. It's crazy to me that there are multiple green flip planeswalkers in here, but what are you going to do? I mean, there are multiple red-green flip cards in here too as well when we talk about like Huntmaster of the Fells is in there. This is one of the other ones with decent value on it. It's $12 and it's got new artwork. So that may push the demand for this card up a bit and people may want to have four copies of it because it does have better artwork on both sides. I mean, the Ravager of the Fells looks intense too and has a, has a uh, werewolf vibe to it, but it doesn't look like a savage werewolf. It looks like a more intelligent, like, oh God, it's inhumanly strong but it's going to take its time and figure out what it wants to do as opposed to just running and get killed easily. So $12 on that card. Then we have the second least valuable card in the set, and that is Delver of Secrets. $2 on this guy. He flips into the Insect uh, Isle Aberration. Now, the reason, that he, the reason that he's not worth as much is because this is a common. Now, this being included, totally fine. I mean, it is an iconic transform card. This card, obviously, even the common's worth like the two dollars because of even even based on the number that were printed it's still powerful enough to justify this price tag now because it is foil and because it's alternate art this one could easily easily end up being worth more than two dollars based on demand but again i'm using non-foil uh just regular pricing because conservative it's conservative is the way to go when you do these sort of analysis so after that we have the final card which is liliana heretical healer She's the final legendary creature planeswalker flip card. That's what we're going to finish off with, sandwiched between two of those. So that is a $14 card, and she turns into Liliana Defiant Necromancer, which is a solid planeswalker with awesome artwork. I really enjoy it. It's so cool. So that covers all the cards that you get in there. Now, they total up to a value of $134.50. Now... The suggested manufacturer's retail price for this would be $45, but you have to throw the suggested retail price out the window when it comes to From the Vault products specifically because they are incredibly allocated and they were never designed to be sold as a regular retail product. Now, when it comes to allocations, you have products like Ixalan, Hour of Devastation, where there essentially aren't any allocations. It's just, we're going to print this for this long. We're going to print a whole crazy amount of it, and you can buy as much as you want for as long as it's around. And then there's a tighter level of allocation you get with the Modern Masters, Iconic Masters, where you can only buy so much of that product, but there's still a fair bit of it around, and it'll be on shelves for a lot. And then there's from the vault level allocations, same thing you saw with Commander's Arsenal. Now, these have insanely tight allocation levels like basically here's how it breaks down core level stores get five of these at all that's it that's all they can get you can't order more end of list after that you get advanced they get 10 and then advanced plus the highest level you can be 15 so the biggest most impressive magic shops in the world get 15 of these. That's how this works. That's how allocation level works. So most stores are probably around advanced level or core. So there's going to be five to 10 of these available at any given store. And Wizards specifically markets these two stores as something that includes pivotal and fan favorite cards, which is hilarious to me. Fan favorite cards are going to say about Argul's Bloodfast has been out for 38 days. But anyways, it's marketed as that. But the reason you have to throw out the MSRP is the how how it works is when stores buy these they pay a percentage of msrp that's how that's how it's determined so for wizards to be able to get these in the hands of the stores cheaply they have to set the suggested retail price very low so that the stores pay a low price for this because wizards suggest that you use this to reward like in-store loyalty use it for running like an in-store league use it to promote like pre-registration for pre-releases basically use this to reward your loyal customers use this to drive sales you're only going to get a few of these we're going to give them to you cheap but they're going to sell high and you can see this because there are already ebay listings for these at 75 dollars and that's the normal price you can expect these i mean the ebay list that's a high ebay listing the ebay listings are going for 60 to 75 dollars right now and 
I wouldn't be surprised to see I'm, sometimes these can push up to $100. And depending on the demand level, because this is a low allocation, I think this is lower than before. Um, anyways, because I haven't done analysis like this for the channel, so I haven't paid as high level to the allocation. It hasn't been as important. Anyways, we'll know going forwards. So we'll, we'll keep on top of the allocations. But regardless, you need to understand that because of the allocations and then because of the intent of the product it's something that's meant to be given to the retailers as a kind of a reward to be used to help push things in the store it's almost like f and m promos for the stores but they have to pay a little bit you know so that's how it works so the price value on these if you see them going in the store for 80 or 90 dollars it's not because the store is gouging you it's because they literally are given these for that purpose, it's to reward the store. Generally, they're used to, to like drive events, but at the same time, if they want to sell them, that's kind of the purpose. They're not meant as like a widespread, directly for the player kind of product. So they're a little bit different, so bear that in mind when you see the price so you don't feel insulted. If you want to, you can include the value of the collector's spin down die as well. Normally, those go for $2 when you get them in fat packs with regular sets to value the one for this i mean if you want to value it up to five dollars you could because over time they will go up in value they are allocated each store will only be able to get 15 of these so that's fewer dice than would be opened at one pre-release let alone all the fat packs and things for the regular run of spin down dice so about 140 dollars worth of value in the package and then 45 dollars is the msrp but you can usually expect it to see it at about 75 anywhere from 60 to 100 dollars really a huge range so even at any of those values it's totally worth it all these cards that i've priced out are done at non-foil values the from the vaults are limited enough that they won't really have a depressive price much on the price of anything but the most overpriced of foils so that wraps up the analysis it's a big fat thumbs up for me in terms of getting a bunch of cards you like I do not like the fact that it's called From the Vault and it's supposed to be going back and picking old school fan favorite and cool cards and it's a bunch of new stuff as well, but it is a limitation of the concept. So, thanks for coming by and we'll see you next time, guys. And if you like what I'm doing, then you know what? I don't normally say this, but hit subscribe and also consider helping us out on Patreon as well. Thanks for coming by. Together, we are the sixth color of magic. Have a good one.